Saturday. It is a slow Saturday and look what I've got on. Bespoke is finished. At last, at long last. I can't tell you how much I have frogged with this design and every time it was because of just carelessness. Utter carelessness. So this is what she looks like. She's got the cables here on the raglan and then under the arm it joins into a panel. The front and the back cable joins into this panel down the side. But I am going to take it off because it is no longer this cold in Hartbespoort. It's actually a very nice day today. So um, the mirror hair is a bit hot. Okay, so Bespoke has been tested. Um, I'm just waiting for my tech editor to give me the go ahead and then she will be published. Now, in front of the TV this week, I was knitting the um, sleeves. I always do the first sleeve completely done and then I do the second sleeve and when I get close to the end, then I count the rows on this sleeve and then I just make sure the number of rows are the same. And I actually use little pair pins to help me. So I count 20 rows, put a pair pin, 20 rows, put a pair pin, 20 rows, put a pair pin. And then I saw, okay, this one is only 50. Okay, let's count the sleeve that we're working on. 20 rows, put a pair pin, 20 rows, put a pair pin. Oh, I need to put 15 more, which I did. And I cast it off. And I sewed the seam. And I weaved away all the tails. And I was like, oh, I'm done. And I lifted it up and I was like, something's wrong. Yeah, the one sleeve was 20, 20 rows shorter than the other one. So I had to undo my tails on that sleeve, which was a mission. Then I had to undo the seam, uh, undo the cast off. And with the mohair, to undo the cast off is dreadful. If you think it's difficult to frog with mohair, that's nothing. If you want to undo a cast off, that's a entirely different story. But eventually she was done. So yesterday I decided I'm going to quickly um, knit up a matching hat because I have some yarn left. And initially I started with the rebel hat. So I did this double, this thick, nice fat double rip at the bottom. And then I thought, oh no, I'm not going to do it right with the rebel hat. I'll do something else. So this one is sort of in between the straight rebel and the poofy rebel. It's somewhere in the middle, but it's very nice. Um, so for next winter, my ears will be all nice and warm and comfy. Very, very nice. So yesterday, my bestie was here for our normal Friday, um, Friday chats. Her children is in a boarding school close to us so on a friday she comes through early to me and then we sit and we have coffee and we knit and we chat and then eventually she picks up the kids and she goes home so that was our last friday chat yesterday because we are moving next week um yeah i am starting as a ba a business analyst with a financial company in september i would have started on the first of september but they have graciously said I can start on the 5th so that I can just move next week. And um, we couldn't find a house even initially. And um, by faith, I booked the moving company. The moving company will come on the 31st uh, to pack up everything. And on the 1st, they will collect our stuff. Now, the quote that they sent me had a, um, a collection address, which is where I'm now. And for a delivery address, it said to be confirmed. So I booked them totally in faith. But we found a house on Thursday. So um, I'm getting the key on Tuesday. Then I can get a cleaning company in there to clean the whole house and wash the windows and whatever. And next week, Thursday, we are moving. So oh, I'm going to miss my Friday chats with Alta. But so it goes. Life is life, eh? Hey? Yeah. I'm very thankful that I got a job so fast and so easily. And I'm looking forward to starting. I'm looking forward to a challenge. But don't worry, I'm not going to stop designing. I 
as expected, Ulta loved the knotty habit that I showed you last week. It had um, shades of denim blue with a little bit of pink and a little bit of purple. And the denim blue thing is not me. I always wear black. I don't wear jeans. So Alta and I made a swap. She will take that knotty habit. And um, I got some bamboo from her. It's a blue label bamboo. And it's a lovely... Um, it's like a, a bright cerise pink nearly, but there's a lot of shades in there. You can see, there you can see nicely, there's, there's a whole lot of pink shades in there. So I'm putting the winter garments away now, and the winter yarn as well. Um, now I'm working with bamboo or cotton or merino sock. The thicker merino is now not in the loop, that's for winter, so I'll put that away. Um... So this one will be on my needles soon. I'm thinking of a summer top. A real dainty, feminine, lacy summer top. That is what is in my head. But other than that, I haven't decided on anything yet. But that is what this is going to go for. So that will be after the move, I will start on this. I'm not going to start now. I'm going to take all my yarn and put them in the cupboard so that the packers can all put them in one place and then I will unpack them on the other side and once we've settled then I will get going on this summer top. Okay. So don't worry, I'm not going to stop designing. I'll go crazy if I do. The, the pictures are still lining up in my head and I've got to do something with them. I've got brilliant news. You will remember that a couple of years ago I... Um, presented a workshop all across South Africa and in Namibia and we called it the Crochet Guide to Greatness. Now what that workshop entailed was everything about crochet. Um, different hooks. What are the differences between the hooks? How do you choose a hook? How do you look after your hands? How do you choose colors? How do you substitute yarn? How do you calculate how much yarn you will need for that blanket that you like so much? How do you work in rows to have neat edges? How do you work in a circle to have a great round circle and not one with slight angles? How do you keep um, a big giant square from leaning? How do you keep a blanket from having these waves when you do the border? All those kind of things are in there. And when I was presenting the workshop, the workshop was extremely popular. Um, and many people complained that they couldn't get to the workshops because they were either living in um, small remote little towns or they were international. I know many of my international followers were very upset that they just couldn't get to the course content. So I have gone and reworked the content of the Crochet Guide to Greatness into a manual with a lot of video links in there. And that manual is currently being um, edited by my tech editor and um, both that and the bespoke will be available before the end of August. I'm going to launch them early next week. Um, the Crochet Guide to Greatness is going to be on Crubly. Crubly is a platform where you buy um, training content once off and you have lifelong access. So if you do not want to subscribe to my Patreon, then purchase it on Crubly. I've also published the Let's Learn on Crubly. So if you've got somebody that wants to learn to crochet or that wants to learn to knit, Let's Learn is available on Crubly. You can buy it as a gift and give it to the person. And the Crochet Guide to Greatness will be on Crubly as well. But for my patrons, obviously, there will be a good discount on Bespoke and on um, the Crochet Guide to Greatness. I haven't decided yet what the price will be, but we'll get to that next week. So that's about all the news from me. I'm getting ready to move. We're going to have a nice quiet day today with the children that live close to us. They're coming through, so we're going to have a nice barbecue today. A braiki mit braai broikis. And then um, tomorrow we, my husband and I will start to sort the house out and put everything where it belongs so that it will be easy for the packers to pack up the house. That is something that is totally amazing to me. You know, today there will be nothing there. 
Tomorrow there will be a piece of paper. And in two days time there is a whole collection of stuff. Just stuff. A screwdriver, a screw, uh, a cap of something, pieces of paper, invoices. And I don't know how those things accumulate. I swear they walk around in the middle of the night when I'm sleeping and they accumulate in these little hot spots. So those are the things that I want to sort out the weekend. I want to clear all the little hot spots in the house. I don't know how they happen but they do. It's one of the miseries of uh, mysteries of a household. It's those little hot spots that accumulate, uh, Tupperware containers that lose their lids, or lids that use lose their containers, and socks, socks that go missing in the wash. Some somebody said they think that socks that go missing in the wash turns themselves into Tupperware containers, and they sit in the cupboard and they've got no lid or something like that. I, I tend to agree with that. Okay, there's, there's not even anybody in my house that does the washing, it's just me. So, where do the socks go? I don't know. They're not in the washing machine, they're not in the tumble dryer. I didn't drop them anywhere on the floor. It's a mystery. Total mystery. So, this weekend I'm going to clear up the hot spots that so mysteriously accumulate in my house. And next week I'm moving. So... Keep your eye on my social media. Bespoke is going to be launched this week. The, the sweater, not the hat. I'm not even going to write up the pattern for the hat. The hat patterns just doesn't sell. They, they don't sell and it's just too much time that I have to spend writing up the pattern, getting it tested, having it photographed and then there's three or four people that buy the hat pattern. It's, no, I'm not going to do that. Okay, I have an interview for you today with Adela Marie. She is the marling queen in South Africa. Unfortunately, there are two places in the video where my screensaver suddenly jumped up because I'm on a new laptop. I purchased a new laptop. My old one died and I forgot to disable the screensaver before we did the Zoom interview. Um, I'm also on the free version of Zoom and with all the uh, connectivity and sound issues we had in the beginning, our interview got a bit long so towards the end you will also see a window jump up that says you're, you've got 10 minutes of your free time left or something like that. I do apologize for that but um, the interview is most informative. I'm very excited about the modeling thing. I'm definitely giving it a, I'm going to give it a try. Um, as soon as Adela is presenting a workshop somewhere, I will definitely make a plan to go. Okay, I think that's all. Um, in the interview, she mentions a few patterns. Um, all the links to that are in the description of this video, as well as links to her social media. Go follow her, um, support her. She's a podcaster as well. So, um, yeah, that's something new and something all of us can get into. It's, for me, very interesting. I've got no lace yarn in my stash, so I have to purchase lace yarn now, from now on, when I see something nice, so that I can eventually do some marling. That is in my to-do list. Great. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you next Saturday, hopefully, from um, my new house. A very warm welcome to Adela. Adela is the queen of modeling. Welcome, Adela. <laughs> Thanks, Hilda. Thanks. It's an honor to be part of your channel and to chat with you. What have you got on? Is it something that you've made yourself? It looks like it. Yes, it's a, my take on, a, on the pinguino. That's a pattern by Stephen West. Um, a much more subdued version. <laughs> okay. Is he one yeah, of your favorite yeah. designers? Um, I, yes, I would say so. I think his whole um, aura and his enthusiasm, enthous enthusiastic approach to yarn and knitting um, is so inspiring to me i think that's it and i think it's got he's got a brilliant mind and a brain you know to to mm. i don't even i wouldn't know where to begin to design something like this and it's as if it's just a natural uh, it's just you know 
I don't think he even spends a lot of time struggling with how it should happen. I think he, because he said about the penguin, no, he, he just decided, I'm going to cast on stitches. How many should I start with? Let's make it 50. You know, it's it's just brilliant, you know. And I think um, because he's so good at Marlene, he's definitely inspiring in, in um on that subject <laughs> when did you start the marling how long ago and why tell us a bit more um it was a quite a, um, a long period of time that i didn't knit so i crocheted more i i started knitting when i was six years old and then uh, i learned to crochet from youtube and then um I made my lean from one of a kind yarns. And um, I think my first um, connection with Molly was um, thanks to her. Because um, she has done it. She's been part of the creative knitters. And um, I think she, she um, laid the ground rules for me <laughs> to say, actually, there's not many rules. <laughs> You know, it's it's just something that you have to practice and um, do it over and over and see what you like and what happens to the colors and what happens to the different yarns. So yes, I think I think it started with her and um, it was just some. I I actually struggled in the beginning. Um, and then I came home, we did a class with her and I came home and I um, frogged everything and I started from scratch again. Um, I'm not good. I'm not a good pupil in a class. <laughs> I don't know why. I think my brain works um, differently. So I must actually, I think I'm better at sitting alone mm. um, somewhere where it's quiet and figure it out on my own and see what I like and what happens. So it was just, I think it's just something that I like playing with colors. I like, I love color and I love how you can actually combine colors and make your own color with Marlene. How do you choose your colors? Do you swatch beforehand to see what it will look like or are you ever wondering whether something you know, will work? You know, I don't swatch, you know. <laughs> you know how my feeling is about swatching. Living on the I'm wild one side. Of the naughty ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of the naughty ones. Um, no, I don't. I just start knitting. Um, for this, um, let me just, I think it would be better if I just take it off and I can show you. Um, because I think it's quite a good example. You start with a back. And this is um, moss stitched. So um, what I usually do is um, I will, you know, I do have a considerable stash of lace yarns because I love to mow. And I think lace yarns is um, for me, um, the best yarn to mold with because you can actually combine uh, or use three strands together like in this oh. and it's still not yeah it's still when three strands will be a double knit mm. so it's still wearable for our climate mm. um i love two strands as well but um i decided well i went through my stash and um i decided on pinks and blues that's what I took out of my stash. And then um, as I was knitting and as I continued knitting, I decided that I love the blue, blue, the calming blue aspect of the whole thing. So a lot of the pinks went back into my stash and more blues came out. <laughs> and that's what I, that's why I need a stash. Um, I can't see myself knitting the way I do if I don't have a stash because I can change my mind 10 o'clock at night and go to my stash and find the exact color that I'm looking for. 
<laughs> now, how big so is that I stash? Think you are, I don't think. I I think. Um, how how do you explain how do you explain it in size? Would you say? Is it in a tall boy? Um, is it in a cupboard? Is it a room full? I've got a craft room with um, plastic crates where all my yarn is sorted, and I would say there's more or less. Let me say. 20 crates but it's not big ones it's like you know medium crates because i like my um yarn weights together you know mm. in a one and i'm not mine is not sorted according to colors mine is sorted according to yarn weights yeah it's just how i like to have yeah. it organized so, um i don't think it's that big i have i've i'm bee stashing frequently and um, I've destashed a lot of yarns that, you know, I think taste our tastes um, change mm. and what we want to do. And 10 years ago, I was just blanket orientated and I bought a lot of cottons and bamboos to crochet blankets with. Now it's just all about, mostly about garments. Mm. And, and what I want to knit the garments with has changed. So I've destashed a lot of yarn. So I really don't think, and it's not, um, it's against one wall, um, neatly stacked. And I think there's two um, stacks of about this high and then some larger crates. So it's not really, I would say that big. Um, I think there's a lot of people that's got much more yarn than I have. <laughs> so if you start but I'm very specific. <laughs> if you start on a new project, will you choose, like you said now, two colours to mull with? So you will take mostly pinks and blues out or whatever two colours do you decide on, or do you take out three colours sometimes? Was it mostly two? No, you know, I will I I like to stay in a, and if I give advice, I always say stay in a certain color palette. Um, take maybe your your color wheel and stay in a quarter of that color wheel, just to make things a little bit easier. And um, because I think some people think they have to use all the colors of the rainbow when they mold, <laughs> and sometimes it will work, and sometimes it doesn't work it depends on what you are creating mm. um there's just one book that that i really want to um talk about very quickly and it's the making malls by cecilia Pompanchero. i don't know if you know this book no oh but it's um, beautiful it's it's mm -hmm. like a it's like a bible of mauling it's i just of course I had to have this book um we i ordered it from amazon and um I made a scarf out of this book. I just want to quickly, um, it's this scarf, um, Castel. I think it's called Castel. Oh, wow. I love the top one. And yes, the one is more pastel colors and mm. the other one is more dark, moody colors. Mm. But she uses, there's a 13 color version and a 15 color version. And um, I can't actually show it to you, but it's um, 105 um, repeats, I think. And she's got it in columns of all the combinations. She goes through the whole spectrum of all the possible combinations. Wow. So that is really uh, 15 colors. Then, then you actually go through the whole spectrum of the sure. color wheel. But yeah, then she um, combines all of them. So it's possible. But I wouldn't say start with something like that, um, <laughs> unless you have this book. Yeah. Unless you have this book. Um, because then she will tell you exactly, you know, how to do it. She, she's she got samples in here. It's just unbelievable. Wow. Yeah, that's quite something to look mold. at, eh? That makes it certainly, yeah, it makes it easier. The, Hmm. Yeah, so, um, and this is the, the scarf on the on the cover of the book as well. Sure, but it's beautiful. So, that's amazing. Um, yeah, that's really, 
um, something that um, if you really want to dive into, I would say just splurge and or um, ask the whole family to give you money for your birthday and order it from Amazon because that's really some that's that's a book that you have to have in your hands. You can't have an I don't even think she does she has an e version. Wow. So that's a book that you can you know just it's like something that you can study. You can really study Marley, mm. but time the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the time. Yeah. Um, do you yeah. still do your podcast? Yes, I've started again. Um, yeah, so it's it's going well. I actually enjoy doing it and and to show people what because I never do a follow pattern strictly. So it's I like enjoy telling or um, explaining why I'm doing it differently and what I'm doing differently. Okay. Interesting. And do you still give classes in the modeling? Is there any workshops we can look forward to? Not at the moment. Um, uh, I, I haven't given a class in quite a while. Um, you know, actually, um, I'm very um, split in halves at the moment because I'm really, really enjoying knitting fair owl. Um, I'm really into fair owl knitting at the moment. So color work is... I think if, if um, I have to be on an island, um, just give me one of Marie Wallen's Fair Owl uh, cardigan patterns and enough yarn, uh, <laughs> you know, that kind of yarns to do that, then I'll I'll be happy on my island for, for, for a very long time. Don't you want the shift so, to go um, as well? Um, yes, that will be nice. So that I don't have to um, walk through the island and search for food. <laughs> I think if there's enough food, a chef to cook it, and enough wine, it will work. <laughs> I can do without the wine. But, um, yeah, nice food will be nice. But nice yarn, like Marie Wallen's British Breeds or, you know, John Auburn yarns, then oh, I will be... Shetland. I think I should just go and live on Shetland Island. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's your favorite fiber content to work with? Definitely wool. Um, I just I just enjoy wool and um, I've now experienced knitting with um, like um, I think that my my ultimate ultimate dream yarn. Um, is definitely the John Auburn yarns. That's um, I won't say it's rustic. It's just um, non-superwash, and um, it's just the feeling is um, if you have it in your hands and you knit color work with it, then you understand for the first time. You understand why fair all knitting, um, their fair all knitting. Um, of Shetland and um, you know that those countries that uh, work with um, non-superwash yarns is so beautiful. Mm. It's it's really it's got something to do with the yarn that they work with. Mm. And um, unfortunately, we don't have it here. Mm. Okay. And how much time do you spend on your other yarn hobbies, like your weaving? I know you weave. I don't know if you spin. I can't remember. No, I don't spin. I like to ply. Um, um, that's something that I really enjoy, but, but it's also time consuming. Mm. Um, I've neglected the weaving a little bit. I, ha I want to um, spend more time on, on it again. I don't know. I find myself in winter um, knitting more mm. because I love knitting um, winter garments or sweaters and that kind of thing so um, then I neglect the but when it's um, warmer I enjoy the weaving because you don't have any uh, big fabric on mm. your lap and your hands is not sweaty you know you don't have yarn in your hands so it's actually the perfect um, craft for our summers when it's mm. too hot to you know you don't really feel like knitting on a 
warm garment or anything. Um, so this is the Easy by Martina Bem. And uh, you can, you start with a small few stitches and then you increase and, and something very simple like this is actually very easy to play with um, colors, with marling and taking one out and replacing it with another one and just playing with colors and see what happens. I like it and that the stripes are not uniform in width. You have some small ones and a little bit bigger and a big one. That's really playful. You know, I, I get bored very easily. So uh, I always have to, um, sometimes I will knit till the yarn is, um, I've used up the, sometimes I work with small little leftover balls and then I will just keep on knitting till um, it's, I've worked through the remaining piece and sometimes I just feel that I want to get through the whole sequence or all the combinations or I get too um, curious to see what will happen with the next color. So yeah, this is actually something like this is very nice to just play with it. And do you and, ever um, blend variegated yarns? Yo, yo, this is um, very subtle, but I would say this is very subtle variegated yarns. Um, I can show you this is, uh, this was a crochet um, shawl I did once, I think when I gave my classes. And yeah, I used Ooh, quite a wow. lot of um, variegated yarns. Oh, that's so it's nice. Double crochet. Wow, I like that. And it's also two strands of lace. You know, and you also s start with a little tiny bit. And I I love using up all the, like I said to you, I think I'm, I'm OCD when it comes to using up every little scrap of my yarn. <laughs> so um, I will just start and when it's almost done, I will, um, you know, take another one that's maybe matching or have some of the same colors in it and then crochet until that one is done and then add another one sure, so this is beautiful. all um two strands of lace and it's really the, the feeling is is so nice i really really like working with two strands of lace it's just it's just marvelous <laughs> i think it's my if you want to ask me um like i think you asked me about um, my favorite yarn and fiber to work with but okay I can say that it's the non superwash yarn for color work but for something like this or for our local using our local yarns I would say two strands of lace is my ultimate favorite knitting experience or crocheting experience you know it's it's really so enjoyable and um i think what's also there's a new craze i don't know if you know about it and everybody's doing it now it's the sophie scarf by petite knit and last night when i thought i would go and um through my lace and maybe take out one or two um, examples of color combinations and then i decided this now i want to <laughs> see how it looks i can't wait to show it to you so um i took out just leftovers of these um four colors mm. so um i started with these two and then i melted for a few rows um while adding this one so i will uh, use that combo and then i will do um, this combo, that combo, this combo, and then cut this one, and then knit with this combo, and then later on I will add this combo. Hmm. So as you can see, um, I like staying in a, a certain palette, you know, hmm. just to, otherwise it can be wow if you don't know what you're doing, and it's turning out so much fun. It's it's just oh, like it's a. It's a very dainty little scarf wow. um, that you wear around your neck. So, um, and it's so much fun. So there you can see where I melted the, the new color and now I've just started knitting the, the new combo and I'm going to keep that on for 
quite a big piece and then I will uh, just add this one so the the other end will be in in this combo thing our time is nearly up and but I please tell me look very elegant <laughs> around my neck this is definitely <laughs> gonna look very elegant I'm interested in your knitting pin <laughs> What do you use to knit oh, with? I see is, you've got straights. Um, yeah, I, I like to use DPNs when I'm, I only got a few stitches and then I put a tulip stopper so I make my own. So it's just plain DPNs. I oh, think okay. I bought them from Scarpy. Um, I think this is Addy or something. There's five, um, all five the DPNs has got different colors. Oh. I don't even know. Nice. Yes, the other one is blue. <laughs> So I actually, I'm sad because I lost my pink um, stopper somewhere. So I must get an, an, because I would have liked to put a pink stopper on the pink needle <laughs> and a blue stopper. <laughs> the queen of color as OZD. I'm weird like that. I'm really weird. Yeah, but that's, that's just how I am. And something else I can maybe show you. I've shown it on my podcast, but this is a, just a plain raglan sweater. It's so nice to play with colors sure. in this. Yeah, that is beautiful. And and it's just, yeah, it's just two, two singles. Mm. Um, and also again in a, in a palette, mm. as you can see. That is amazing. And, um, I started with a, I started with a darker color. Yeah, uh, a really dark teal single and then the other lighter colors and I started knitting and then I realized no that color is too dark and so I didn't switch I just I just start my as I say the start of my sweet is my gauge is my swatch um, and then I decided now that color is too dark and I just cropped it and started over um, went back to my stash you know that's why I have to have because if I bought that combo to knit this with and it didn't work then I would have been you know so it was all out of my stash mm. so I just put that back and took out other colors that's um, much closer uh, much closer connection and um, yes, I think it worked well. And, and it's so nice to play with all the, and there's no rhyme or reason. I just decided I'm going to, I'm not going to make a, uh, like a ombre. I'm just going to do a stri I want the stripey effect. And I decided to, to make it easier for myself. I'm going to do six row combos or 12 row combos. That's <laughs> and beautiful. again, just, um, Knitting with two, taking one out and taking another one and using all the combos that I had. I think I had four or five colors that's in this because this is one of my, you can see that why I had about six or seven skeins in these colors is because it's one of my favorite colors. So every time I um, the dye house yarns, she doesn't dye anymore. But um, the yarn room used to stock her singles. And every time I visited there, I said, ooh, there's a color I don't have. <laughs> it's all in the same. <laughs> so I bought these, I can say easily three, three years ago. I bought them over a period of time. So um, I never go to a shop and buy seven or eight skeins of singles to knit a garment with. No, I, it's always something that I've Odds bought and over time and yeah yeah and then I have enough and then you know I can knit something like this because it's um I don't you know I don't know a lot of people that can go to a yarn shop and buy seven or eight skeins of singles um once off no so um and and buy lace as well you know it's something that has been um, accumulated over five or six years you know so um you, have, you actually for Mali, it's maybe easier to have choices mm. otherwise you can feel a little bit restricted <laughs> that makes sense thank you so much for your time 
I'm going to put a link to it's your podcast pleasure. so that everybody can join your podcast. And if there's a workshop coming, I'm looking forward to that. I will certainly come. Because my colors oh, are dreadful. Well. I'm not good with putting <laughs> colors together. Not at all. Yeah, but remember that. Start just, I think it's practice and start with um, just, you know, a small piece of the color wheel and work within that mm. color wheel and just some, do some experimenting. I think that's the best. And yeah, maybe we can um, think of uh, doing a, a workshop somewhere, you know, when you are uh, closer and organize something. Definitely. And play that with, sounds good. Just, just play with yarn with yarn that's that's what i like to do <laughs> fantastic thank you adela i hope you have a great weekend it's a pleasure. thank you